91. You need to provide a corporate user account in Google Cloud for each of your developers and operational staff who need direct access to GCP resources. Corporate policy requires you to maintain the user identity in a third-party identity management provider and leverage single sign-on. You learn that a significant number of users are using their corporate domain email addresses for personal Google accounts, and you need to follow Google recommended practices to convert existing unmanaged users to managed accounts. Which two actions should you take? Choose two. A. Use Google Cloud Directory Sync to synchronize your local identity management system to cloud identity. B. Use the Google Admin Console to view which managed users are using a personal account for their recovery email. C. Add users to your managed Google account and force users to change the email addresses associated with their personal accounts. D. Use the transfer tool for unmanaged users, TTUU, to find users with conflicting accounts and ask them to transfer their personal Google accounts. E. Send an email to all of your employees and ask those users with corporate email addresses for personal Google accounts to delete the personal accounts immediately. Correct answer A and D. I. Use Google Cloud Directory Sync to synchronize your local identity management system to cloud identity. D. Use the transfer tool for unmanaged users, TTUU, to find users with conflicting accounts and ask them to transfer their personal Google accounts. Ninety-two. You are on your company's development team. You notice that your web application hosted in staging on GKE dynamically includes user data in web pages without first properly validating the inputted data. This could allow an attacker to execute gibberish commands and display arbitrary content in a victim user's browser in a production environment. How should you prevent and fix this vulnerability? A. I use Cloud IAP based on IP address or end user device attributes to prevent and fix the vulnerability. B. Set up an HTTPS load balancer and then use Cloud Armor for the production environment to prevent the potential XSS attack. C. Use Web Security Scanner to validate the usage of an outdated library in the code and then use a secured version of the included library. D. Use Web Security Scanner in staging to simulate an XSS injection attack and then use a templating system that supports contextual auto-escaping. Correct answer. D. Use Web Security Scanner in staging to simulate an XSS injection attack and then use a templating system that supports contextual auto-escaping. 93. You are part of a security team that wants to ensure that a cloud storage bucket in Project A can only be readable from Project B. You also want to ensure that data in the cloud storage bucket cannot be accessed from or copied to cloud storage buckets outside the network, even if the user has the correct credentials. What should you do? A. Enable VPC service controls, create a perimeter with Project A and B, and include cloud storage service. B. Enable domain restricted sharing organization policy and bucket policy only on the cloud storage bucket. C. Enable private access in Project A and B networks with strict firewall rules to allow communication between the networks. D. Enable VPC peering between Project A and B networks with strict firewall rules to allow communication between the networks. Correct answer, A. Enable VPC service controls, create a perimeter with Project A and B, and include cloud storage service. 94. You are responsible for protecting highly sensitive data in BigQuery. Your operations teams need access to this data, but given privacy regulations, you want to ensure that they cannot read the sensitive fields such as email addresses and first names. These specific sensitive fields should only be available on a need-to-know basis to the human resources team. What should you do? A. Perform data masking with the Cloud Data Loss Prevention API and store that data in BigQuery for later use. B. Perform data redaction with the Cloud Data Loss Prevention API and store that data in BigQuery for later use. C. Perform data inspection with the Cloud Data Loss Prevention API and store that data in BigQuery for later use. D. Perform tokenization for pseudonymization with the Cloud Data Loss Prevention API and store that data in BigQuery for later use. 
Correct answer. D. Perform tokenization for pseudonymization with the Cloud Data Loss Prevention API and store the data in BigQuery for later use. Ninety-five. You are a security administrator at your organization. You need to restrict service account creation capability within production environments. You want to accomplish this centrally across the organization. What should you do? I use identity and access management, I am, to restrict access of all users and service accounts that have access to the production environment. B. Use organization policy boolean to disable the creation of new service accounts. C. Use organization policy boolean to disable the creation of new service accounts. D. Use organization policy constraints slash im dot disable service account creation boolean to disable the creation of new service accounts. Correct answer. D. Use organization policy constraints slash im dot disable service account creation boolean to disable the creation of new service accounts. 96. You are the project owner for a regulated workload that runs in a project you own and manages an identity and access management, I am, admin. For an upcoming audit, you need to provide access reviews evidence. Which tool should you use? A. A policy troubleshooter. B. A policy analyzer. C. I am recommender. D. Policy simulator. Correct answer, B. A policy analyzer. 97. Your organization has implemented synchronization and SAML federation between cloud identity and Microsoft Active Directory. You want to reduce the risk of Google Cloud user accounts being compromised. What should you do? I create a cloud identity password policy with strong password settings and configure two-step verification with security keys in the Google Admin Console. B. Create a cloud identity password policy with strong password settings and configure two-step verification with verification codes via text or phone call in the Google Admin Console. C. Create an active directory domain password policy with strong password settings and configure post-SSO, single sign-on, two-step verification with security keys in the Google Admin Console. D. Create an active directory domain password policy with strong password settings and configure post-SSO, single sign-on, Two-step verification with verification codes via text or phone call in the Google Admin Console. Correct answer. C. Create an active directory domain password policy with strong password settings and configure post-SSO, single sign-on, two-step verification with security keys in the Google Admin Console. 98. You have been tasked with implementing external web application protection against common web application attacks for a public application on Google Cloud. You want to validate these policy changes before they are enforced. What service should you use? A. Google Cloud Armor's pre-configured rules in preview mode. B. Pre-populated VPC firewall rules in monitor mode. C. The inherent protections of Google Front End, GFE. D. Cloud Load Balancing Firewall Rules E. VPC Service Controls in Dry Run Mode Correct answer A. Google Cloud Armor's Pre-Configured Rules in Preview Mode 99. You are asked to recommend a solution to store and retrieve sensitive configuration data from an application that runs on Compute Engine. Which option should you recommend? A. Cloud Key Management Service B. Compute Engine Guest Attributes C. Compute Engine Custom Metadata D. Secret Manager Manager Correct answer, D. Secret Manager 100 
You need to implement an encryption at rest strategy that reduces key management complexity for non-sensitive data and protects sensitive data while providing the flexibility of controlling the key residency and rotation schedule. FIPS 140-2L1 compliance is required for all data types. What should you do? A. Encrypt non-sensitive data and sensitive data with Cloud External Key Manager. B. Encrypt non-sensitive data and sensitive data with Cloud Key Management Service. C. Encrypt non-sensitive data with Google Default Encryption and encrypt sensitive data with Cloud External Key Manager. D. Encrypt non-sensitive data with Google Default Encryption and encrypt sensitive data with Cloud Key Management Service. Correct answer. D. Encrypt non-sensitive data with Google Default Encryption and encrypt sensitive data with Cloud Key Management Service.